Hey, what's up you guys? It's Megan. Today is going to be another sit-down video where I talk about my life because I think it could help other people. Um, today's topic is one that I have personally struggled with in my life and occasionally do still struggle with. Um, as far as, like, urges go and feelings go. But today's topic is going to be on the topic of self-harm in all of its many, 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 many forms. Those that are noticed, those that aren't noticed, those that you might not even be aware of. Um, I'm going to start with a little backstory on my own journey with self-harm, uh, my own story. And so I started self-harming... Uh, November of 2015, um, and I'll put a trigger warning now, um, I will talk about cutting, I will talk about burning, um, and a lot of types of self-harm, and I will also include some resources should you need it. Um, I started self-harming in the summer of 20- no, I always want to say in the summer of blank whenever I'm talking about anything, and it's not like that. Um, I started self-harming November of 2015 because of some family issues that were going on in my personal life. Um, and that self-harm started with cutting. I have scars from it on my arms and on my thigh and one on my stomach. None of them were a suicide attempt, but some people like to believe otherwise, which is fine. They're entitled to what they want to believe. But my self-harm started out with just cutting. Um, it slowly got worse and graduated to burning, specifically on the bottoms of my feet. Because, in my head, I figured if fig burning left a longer pain sensation than cutting did. If I cut my foot, it would hurt for the immediate time, but a few minutes left after, it would go away. If I burned my foot and then stepped on it, it would still sting, basically. So, I went from cutting to burning, and that is what I used to cope with my stress for about three years. Two years? Two years, because I stopped in 2017. Um, I was sent to a mental hospital called Northridge Hospital in California when I was 15 years old. No. Yes, 15 years old for self-harm, suicide, suicidal ideology, which basically means you're thinking about it but you don't have a plan. Um, auditory and visual hallucinations, meaning I saw and heard things that weren't there, and extreme anxiety and depression which I had been diagnosed with at the time. I had been diagnosed with severe anxiety and severe depression. Later has been corrected to situational anxiety and situational depression. Um, my stay at Northridge was fine. Uh, I don't really have anything to complain about. They did the job that they had to do. Did I like it at the time? No, I did not. Um, but thinking back now, had I not gone to Northridge, I probably wouldn't be here right now. After Northridge, I was clean for a little bit and then relapsed and then was clean for a little bit and then relapsed. It was basically that pattern for a long time. And then I started going to... I started basically harming myself unintentionally. Like subconsciously I would harm myself and not really be aware of it. For example, with the anxiety, if I have too much coffee, it heightens my anxiety. So 
what I would do is typically on a normal basis, I would just drink a cup of coffee in the morning to wake myself up, get myself ready for the day. That wouldn't cause me any anxiety. That wouldn't do anything bad for me. It just woke me up. But if I drank two cups or three cups, it would make my anxiety worsen, basically. So I would purposefully drink extra coffee. I would take showers that were a little too hot. I would accidentally bump into door frames and hit my leg or my side on corners of desks or tables or corners of chairs or whatever. I was unintentionally self-harming in a way that people couldn't really notice because who's gonna who's gonna ask you if you've been bumping into chairs and tables basically is what I guess now as is what I think of it as and in this time of quarantine and crisis during COVID-19 I know that personally for me, I feel a lot of stress, I feel a lot of anxiety, I feel a lot of feelings that I felt during those past times where I am starting to hear voices again every so often, I am starting to see things every so often, I am starting to feel depressed more often and anxiety more often. and just all of these things that I once was managing very well on my own. Um, and I know that I'm not alone in this because I have other friends with anxiety and depression that have confided in me and said that they are also feeling extreme emotions that they haven't felt since they were in a very bad time in their lives. So. What I am making this video for is basically to just confirm anyone's feelings who are feeling depressed or anxious or even just a little bit on edge more than usual. And for those of you who have a history of self-harm like I do or are considering self-harm, I want to let you know now that there are alternatives. I'm not going to pretend like I'm bigger than I was because yes, I've overcome it, but no, the urge is still there every once in a while. If I get a little bit too stressed, I want to cut again. I haven't, but the the feeling is still there. If I get a little bit too overwhelmed, I want to burn my feet again. I'm not going to, but that idea and want is still there. So even if you've been clean for a week or a year or 20 years from self-harm, those urges will always be there. So my recommendation to you is start a journal. It sounds stupid, I know. And for those of you who can't write your feelings out and you need to verbally express it or actually do something with it, record it on the voice memos app on your phone and delete it. Or keep it if you want to. I know that I've done that exact same thing. I have a flash drive full of voice memos of how I'm feeling, what I've gone through, what just either hour-long messages of how I'm feeling or just quick five-second spurts of, hey, I'm really overwhelmed that I need to get this out. Because I know for me, as an auditory person and someone who needs to verbally express themselves in order to feel better, I am more inclined to get it out on a recording than I am on paper. Don't get me wrong, paper helps if it's the only thing I have at the moment. Like, if I need to, if I'm in a situation where I have to be quiet, but I have the ability to write, that helps to a degree. But for me personally, just being able to yell and scream and get it out and watch back my anger or frustration or depression or anxiety and think back with a clean heart and a clean mind, basically one that isn't crowded with those thoughts, is a lot, is very therapeutic for me. Another thing you can do is art therapy. I personally have the privilege in my house where I'm able to paint on my door and not get judged for it. On the back of that door, 
is a chalkboard where I'm able to draw on that and not get judged for whatever I draw or write. And I know not everyone has that privilege, so get an art book. Go to Michael's and grab an art book. Just a blank notebook will do. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. It could be lined, it could be unlined, whatever you want. Just draw, write, rip the pages out, tear them apart, glue things in there, cut them up. Anything you need to do, do to the paper. Leave your body alone. For those of you who are musically inclined, write out music to how you're feeling. I've done that too. I've written songs about how I'm feeling emotionally and played them with my ukulele and turning my feelings into music or turning my feelings into artwork helps me feel a lot better afterward. There's a term that my grandma uses called emotional vomiting and it sounds gross, I know, or at least to me it sounds gross, but when you are emotionally vomiting, you're getting it out little by little by little, in batches, in full-blown streams, it doesn't matter. You're getting it out, and that is what is best for you. If you have strong emotions that you need to get out, don't let anyone stop you from trying to get it out. Like I said, if it's even, if it's a five second jot down on a post-it note that says, I'm feeling angry because X, Y, or Z, that is perfectly okay. That's a little bit of emotional vomit that's getting out. Um, but honestly, if there's anything that I can tell you in my experience with self-harm is that there are people who care about you. I'm not going to say your parents or your family or your closest friend because I definitely have family members who are basically, unless it benefits them, they don't want to hear about it. I have friends who I know emotionally wouldn't be able to handle it. That's not their fault. That's not on them. That's nothing like that. It's just they emotionally cannot handle that, which is fine. They're dealing with their own stuff. And so a resource I personally use to... help me is called a crisis text line and I'll put the number in the description and stuff but basically this allows you to text a crisis hotline and they will partner you up with a crisis expert who is a volunteer and will help you help talk you through whatever you're feeling. It's worked for me a dozen times. I can't tell you how many times I've been upset or worried about something that's nonsensical or something that is perfectly sensical and have relied on this, um, oh, relied on this, um, I don't know if you can see that, relied on this resource to help me see things in a clearer view or even just to say, hey, thanks for listening. I'm not gonna do anything, but thank you for listening. Obviously, they're gonna ask if you've, depending on what you tell them, they're gonna ask if you have a plan for suicide or, for, or if you've thought about it. If you need help, please feel free to ask for help. They won't judge you. They're not gonna do anything to judge you. They're not gonna hurt you. They're not gonna anything like that. But, okay, um, but the number for that is 741741, and if you text the word courage, it will partner you up with someone. Another resource that I use is the suicide hotline, obviously. I'm pretty sure I have that contact as well. Um, yeah, the suicide hotline at least for America. I can look to see if there's other res other suicide hotlines for other countries. I'm unsure. But the one for America is 1-800-273-8255. Again, 1-800-273-8255.
I'm telling you all of this because I know what it's like, especially now in quarantine, where it feels like you can't go out to get help. You're stuck in the house. You're stuck with homework or your job that you're working at. Or maybe you got laid off from your job and you're at home running in circles. I know what it's like to run in those circles, and even more so now that I'm not able to go outside or where I'm restricted to what I can do when I'm outside. So I just wanted to make this video to kind of share a bit of myself with you guys and to give you more information on how to help yourselves. Share this video with a friend. I'll put as much resources, as many resources as I can in the description below. Um, but thank you for listening to me and please take care of yourselves. Please look out for yourselves. And if you need anything, don't hesitate to reach out to the resources that can get you what you need. If it's medical help, if it's mental help for your mental illnesses, if it's even just walking outside to get some fresh air, do what you need to do to help yourself. And that's all I really had to say. Please stay safe, keep wearing your masks, keep a six foot distance between you and other people, and just be, be the best you that you can be right now. Because I know that it's difficult, but I know that you can do it. I know that you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it, trust me. Because I'm a hot mess sometimes. <laughs> um, but anyways, yes, I hope you have a good day. I hope that you stay safe and share this with someone who needs it. Bye.